older you get, the more you have to realize you don't have to go to everything for someone to know that you appreciate them and you care. Hey, y'all. Steady calling from Atlanta, steady miss me. Well, well, well. I feel like that fit for this episode. How y'all doing? Hopefully y'all are alive and well and just thriving. I am trying like this new position with the mic, so it's like less awkward. So hopefully it's in fact less awkward. I just got home from the school dance. As y'all know, I teach third grade. And so school dances are starting to get like, they're not at that stage of like, ooh, I want the boy to ask me out. But they are in a way. So I wasn't going to go originally. I was just like, nah, I had a baby shower to go to, which I didn't end up going to. But I was like, all right, I'm going to slide through because I didn't realize a lot of my kids went. And so being able to see your students in like a outer experience, out of the classroom experience is always fun because it's like, you know, like they're human beings. Like, yes, they're students, but they're humans, you know, and it's like they have feelings. They enjoy music. They like to dance. They, you know, you get to see more of their personality come out. So it was definitely fun going to the dance. And I'm glad I went. Um, also, like I'm getting old as fuck, y'all. Like some of the songs they were requiring, uh, requesting, requiring were songs I didn't know. And I've never been in that space where I didn't know a song. When I tell you I hopped on Google and I was like, <laughs> putting the the phone to the speaker because I was like what song is this and it was like TikTok songs and y'all know I'm on TikTok so I was like why am I not in on a loop here I don't know maybe our algorithms are different but it was a cute little vibe fast forward to me not going to the baby shower so I got all dolled up I had like a cute little blazer and stuff I didn't get a picture by myself um I got a picture with kids and I don't you know what I mean? Let's see if I could just throw an emoji over their face or whatever. But I got, you know, I got cute because I'm thinking like, oh, I'm going to go to the dance and then I'm going to go to this baby shower. And I have, I'm a firm believer. I was raised that when you go somewhere, whether you're like going to somebody's house for dinner, uh, I don't know. You Like, when you're invited somewhere, you always come with something in hand. Prime example, I went to my friend's house for Thanksgiving. I came in there with some champagne. I had, you you bring something. So, I struggled with the fact that, like, I don't have nothing to bring because it's not the 15th. And I don't know about how y'all checks are set up, but the way my checks are set up, I need, you know what I mean? We make it just to pay that. You hear me? Keep in mind, gas, I don't know about y'all, but... Gas in my car has kind of been given water and hasn't been lasting as long as it used to. So I've been putting like 15 here, 10 here, 20 there. And it's been running, you know, we've been running through it. So, and eggs is like half a million dollars. Y'all know, y'all know, y'all are not slow. So I didn't want to go like empty handed or whatever, but a couple of my other coworkers was like, oh, we're going to go, oh, instead of going to the school dance, we're going to just go to the baby shower or whatever. And so in my mind, I was originally not going to go to the dance and I was going to go to the baby shower. But then I was like, oh, I'll pull up, see the kids. Um, and also it was just like, what, two, I think it was like two or three hours. So I was like, I can give them two to three hours. And realized I was just like hey I don't know about this I'm empty-handed I'm going with literally just vibes and I don't know if I'm gonna feel comfortable I don't want to be that person to not bring anything and especially I'm coming after it started so it's not like I got there when it started and it's like you know we're keeping it cute okay like I whatever so then I'm with my friend and she I'm like oh we could just ride together whatever so she's like, all right, cool. She was also at the school dance. She's also um, a teacher and at my um, on our campus. And so I was like, all right, cool, whatever. So she gets to put in the address. And I've told y'all this before. Houston, everything is far out. Do you hear me? It is far. Like you going somewhere that is 10, 15 minutes is like down the street here because everything's so stretched out. So she put it in from the school. And it said 39 minutes, huh? 39 minutes is so long. I'm not finna argue with nobody. Keep in mind, let me give y'all the breakdown. It would have been 
39 minutes from where we were to go to said location. I would have to come back from said location to drop my friend off. And then from my friend's house, I would have to go take myself to the cribbo. I'm not trying to do that math. 38 times three, y'all figure it out. It's, it's, you know, 30 plus 30 is an hour. So we already over an hour and some change just in commuting. And I just said gas is what? Water and it's expensive. And I j- literally just put a dub in my tank. So I was like, hey, I'm not really trying to, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to waste. Ah, not waste. That's fucked up. <laughs> it's not wasting. But I didn't want to, like, use up my 20 on gas in one day. Like, I literally just put 20 in the tank. So then I was like, damn, okay, like, we're sitting there contemplating, like, trying to figure out, like, should we go? Should we not? Oh, like, what? And I realized that I think in that moment, right, one of my other friends who also kind of was like, oh, I'll I'll pull up. I'll pull by. Because we're thinking, you know, it's going to be like, what, 10, 15 from where we're at? And so we're not thinking it's that far. And I think... I'm in this day, in this space or day and age for myself where I need to evaluate what I'm giving time to, <laughs> gas to, and energy to, right? And I mean, I, I like, we've had these conversations where we spoke about this before, but I think the older you get, the more you have to realize you don't have to go to everything for someone to know that you appreciate them or you care or you give a fuck about them. You know what I mean? I think it's very immature for before I get into that, needless to say, we didn't go, okay? Dropped my friend off at her house, and I went the hell home. Ta-da, here. But I feel like younger me felt like, oh, I got to go to everything my friend does, uh, throws, every party, every baby shower, every celebration, because I don't want them to think, like, I don't, I don't rock with them, I don't fuck with them, I don't, you know, support them, or X, Y, and Z, right? And I think the older I get, the more I've learned is it's not always about being there in those moments of celebration, right? It's about, hey, like, yes, it would have been lovely for you to be there. But it's also great that you have supported me outside of those spaces that are strictly meant for uplifting, supporting, and really zoomed in on the the beauty. And in this instance, the, the birth of a child, right? And... I would hope, right, this person doesn't feel no type of way that I didn't show or things like that. Context as well. Like, I plan on, like, you know, getting things for this person, like, off their registry. Like, it's not like, oh, I didn't show up and I'm not going to get you nothing, right? Like, I plan on showing up. I plan on showing up as in getting you things that you need for the baby, I also want to decorate. I'm going to help, like, you know, decorate and make them feel special at work. Like, there's things that I'm doing, right? And so even though you are not able to make it, right, or even though you're not in the space to be in, um, I don't know, in a party or a baby shower or, you know, you're like, hey, time to hard. I just put, you know, $20 in the gas tank and I need it for Monday to get to work. You know what I mean? Like I need like this gas to stretch <laughs> till I get paid. And I know that sounds silly, but that's where we are. Right. Like I'm too. I'm personally I'm grown. I'm grown as hell and I'm too old. And I think it was so weird to me because I am constantly like, Oh, I got to show up for people. I got to, like, I'm so, I wouldn't say, well, I could say it about myself. I'd be pressed, right? Like, I am very much, so if I told somebody I'm going to come, I get very, like, mad at myself if I don't come, you know? Um, But I'm when I tell y'all the 39 minutes blew me, <laughs> I was like, uh, what? No, you're lying. Let me, and I looked it up myself. And me and my friend are like, all right, how far is it from your house? And realistic, yeah realistically like it would have just been a lot of back it just was a hot mess express and so I say all that to say if you find yourself in a space where somebody invites you somewhere or you know they got a celebration going on or whatever the case may be don't feel like you gotta bend backwards do a lot of twists and turns to make it there right I think the older we get the more we realize life is gonna fucking life do you hear me? And that may be something where it's like, hey, I'm trying to stretch, you know, this gas tank that may be like, hey, mentally, I kind of my social battery is kind of like on 10 percent and I need to recharge. Like it may look like different things. 
my reason in saying it doesn't matter what your quote unquote excuse is, it's your reason and it's valid enough. So I say that to say because I was literally in that predicament. When I tell you I was so gun ho, I was like, oh, I'm gonna go. And somebody had to talk, like people had to talk me into going because I don't, and y'all please comment down below. Have you, were you raised to just like, oh, you just go and bring vibes? My mom was very big on, you don't go nowhere without nothing. Like you don't go to no party and not offer like, and my mom used to be like, offer something like utensils, plates, you know, soda, you know, appetizers, chips, or you go with something, a gift, a gift card, a car, you know what I mean? Like something. And the fact that I had nothing, and usually I feel like I have, well, I'm not really a gift card person. I don't have like gift cards on deck like that. But, um, you know, I just know that I show up for people and I don't need a like scheduled event to show up for somebody. And so if you are the same, do not feel bad, honey. You, as long as you do you, right, and you show up for those people eventually, it don't got to be like a calculated, oh, I got to show up for this person on the 11th at 2 o'clock. Mm-mm. Right now, I will say, because I know somebody going to take it to the what? To the hoop <laughs> and take it too far. I will say that is also very circumstantial, right? It depends on the circumstance and the situation. But I would say in this situation, this is not my significant other. This is not a family member. You know, like there's m- so many layers to it, right? So I'm, you know, I think in this instance, when it's a friend, a work friend or whatever, like there's some there's some nuances there that we have to like um look into and be like and be for real about you know um so yeah that's what I did on this Saturday I also uh was able to I am tutoring my kids so as I mentioned before third grade is like a star tested grade if you're from mass it's like the version of Texas version of MCAS so we're really just trying to gear up kids and get them ready to take the math um star and pump them up and and do different things and when I say I'm working like a dog day and night drinking from a coffee pot that none of these niggas want to touch and when I say a coffee pot I mean I'm giving you uh, multiplication songs you hear me like rap songs or whatever I'm giving you extra packets to take home to get practice I'm doing tutorials after school an hour an hour and 30 minutes after school might I add Monday through Thursday I'm doing Saturday tutorials I'm waking up at 5 30 because you know I take long to get ready and stuff and I'm working from 7 30 to 11 30 on Saturdays to make sure that you do better so I'm working like a dog you hear me and I'm doing my part. So today was our first day of having Saturday tutorials. And I don't know about y'all, but I used to go to school on Saturday. And I think it was called Saturday Academy. Like you would go. And it wasn't like necessarily like, oh, you're failing. It's like, nah, if you wanted extra help. And we had his, we had one for math, ELA. I want to say hit the like the STEMs. We didn't have one for science, I don't think. Potentially, I think I did go start going for chemistry, um, but it was like that extra like office hours. Right. And so I find that for myself, I just worked so much better in a smaller setting. Like, I don't think it was more than like 12 kids in our groups when we went. And so it was similar. And today, a lot of kids um, didn't show that were supposed to show. But we had some kids that showed up that didn't sign that weren't signed up for it but I guess they figured oh they're in tutorials during the week so like whatever and one of the kids had told me and I'm trying my best my eyes are watering not because I'm sad I don't know why um but one of my students well two of my students who I personally teach like during the week told me they were like hey Miss Corette like I I was dreading Saturday tutorials I'm not gonna lie because it was I mean it's my Saturday and I'm looking at them like shit me we we on the same wavelength where is this going please uplift me don't bring me down and they said how they were like so scared that it was going to be boring and whack and they went on to say like actually no I felt like this was really productive and good like I think I get, I'm getting the help I really need now I feel like I understand it a little better and things like that and I think for me as an educator for a kiddo to say that unprovoked like I didn't ask them or anything they just like upright you know told me it feels good and it feels like this is this is what I do it for do you know what I mean like 
I'm doing, I'm doing the things I'm putting in extra time. Um, you know, adding in extra support, thinking about ways that I can support my kids and get them to the next level, right? Academically. But it's so reassuring and it's so, it's like, it, it's paying off. Do you know what I mean? Now, it's it's not fully paid because we're going to wait for them star scores. Come on, fingers crossed. But it's like, okay, I'm doing this for something and not like, oh, I'm doing this for like, you know, just for the sake of doing it. Now, is your girl getting paid, you know, extra? Yeah. Is it a million dollars? No. But I think it'll make class a lot better because kids are going to understand what the hell we're talking about. Do you hear me? Because sometimes they just, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm throwing the ball. And they're with the glove in the, in the ball. They watch it go over their head and don't say nothing. They just, well... And sometimes it feels like that. As a teacher, it's, like, hard to, like, not take that personal. And, yeah. Yeah. But it was good. It was a good It's, been, it's a good Saturday. Do you hear me? It was good. Uh, what else do I have on the list? I, oh, I had to, I was thinking about, oh, do I want to share this or do I not want to share this? And I was thinking, like, girl, it's season three, and I've been so, I've told y'all shit that I've, like, you know, probably... <laughs> shouldn't have said but you know what fuck it we fuck it what is it we ball till we fall let me take a sip for this one (laughs) so I get really thirsty because of all this talking so on this week has been like a really emotional week for me I have and I won't say this week. I, I had an emotional Thursday, I'll say. And I it started off good. Like my Thursday was good. I was in a good, you know, good mood, good spirits. Seemed fine. Uh there was a situation with a kiddo, and I had to like literally pull them away from a kid or whatever. And I've worked in a classroom where it's um students who have like social emotional challenges and things like that right like they can't control the anger or they have like a lot of anxiety like it's not really cut and dry like you know um and obviously this is not a room of 30 kids this is like a small group and it is um uh layered with support as far as adults in the room so I wasn't it wasn't unfamiliar but for some reason, like, it impacted me, the fact that I had to grab a black boy and, like, take him and, like, physically, you know, make sure that he's safe, right? Um, but I think being in that space and seeing that student in that mode, it was very, it was a lot for me. And I, it was crazy because, like I said, I've seen it before. Like, it wasn't new to me. But I think me having like even me just doing it and like my my, like you go either fight or flight and I was like oh no I gotta help this child like I just instantly it wasn't even hesitation I was like I have to help this kid right I have to help this kid stay safe and also what that other I just can't have this be a bigger situation like I need to make sure all parties are safe and so in doing that like I think obviously I just kicked in took the kid whatever separated in the building and I don't know. It just was different, bro. It was the look of that, the look in that, that child's eyes was like different. And it just, it messed me up. And I didn't realize it messed me up. And so after that, I took my kids to, you know, got support and was able to go back and then take my kids to lunch. And I felt like, wow, like it was still like, Okay, that happened, right? And I, I I just, like, I didn't know what to do, right, with myself. And I think constantly, I think as teachers or caretakers, I think we are constantly thinking about de-escalating somebody else, right, and bringing somebody else down to a their baseline or a calm level where they can, like, function, right? And I never really think about de-escalating myself right I just like I'm always on go and so in that moment I was like oh no 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 I I was like so like uh 
I, I don't want to say hot, like angry, right? But I was just, I felt very sensitive, in, I guess, in that moment. So I went upstairs, and I'm not a crier, y'all. I don't cry often. My therapist tells me, it's like, yeah, you got to cry more. And it's like, I can't. Like, I really can't. And went in my classroom, put my blinds down, and keep in mind, I'm supposed to have a meeting with my supervisor <laughs> at this time. Go in my room, close my door, and just go to town. Do you hear me? Like, just crying. Just, like, profusely crying. And I've and also, I've never cried in front of uh, people at work. So, this is, like, fresh. And I, like, for me to cry in front of you, one, I couldn't control it. Like, my, I literally just, in order for me to come back down from being so like um escalated and I think when we think about escalated escalation we think of like oh I'm angry no it's just like when your emotions are just really high and so in from in that instance for myself and so um, she comes in and I'm like hey look I can't like I can't <laughs> right and like I wasn't able to like put it in the chat because obviously like I'm literally physically like making sure this kid is not like a harm to himself and so she was kind of like out of the loop. She wasn't really sure what was going on. But I, it just messed me up, y'all. And I was tears. Do you like tears? And just, <sighs> and just like, just felt like it was, it was like so much and nonstop. Fun fact about me is when I cry, I can't, because I don't cry often. It's like a, oh, I, it's, I'm, I'm going to be crying all day. I just knew it. So I'm crying, I'm crying. And I also felt like these tears are not just for the situation, right? Like after the fact, um, like in, in having a conversation with uh, those are uh, people I, I, I care about and, you know, kind of get me was like that was just that thing pushed it over the edge and made it like, okay, and boom, here we go. And just a lot, right? So then from there, I'm running on pure adrenaline at that point, right? Then I go from that uh, recess or whatever, and they had, uh, what do you call it? They had lunch, and then they came back up. I know it was a it was a sharp turnaround. I remember that. And so they came back up, and I literally had to just, oh, actually, no, it was a recess, and then it was... Um, like a, a small period. So I like teach the beginning of math before they go into lunch and then their enrichment activity or whatever. And when I tell you I was on a high, I was like running on adrenaline. I was going through, my pacing was great. Keep in mind, I have my content lead. So this is the person from like the regional office who like overlooks math department and content. She uh, co-teaches with me. Thursday and Friday star I'm telling you they they not playing they for real with theirs and my uh supervisor was in there all day as well and so it just already felt like a lot of pressure you know what I mean like you got two motherfuckers watching you you can't you can't slip up you got to be tight and I think it's not like they said anything to me but just their presence alone I'm like oh I gotta be sharp so there was that. So I'm running on adrenaline, trying to get through this lesson. Keep in mind, I never had a second to decompress and like de-escalate myself. So I'm going recess there and I'm just pumping things out. I'm like, okay, now I'm in a staple. Da, da, da. It was just so much. And so then after I sent the kids to lunch and they did that, um, that's when I had the moment where I just let it all out. And it, I just, after I let it out, y'all, it just never stopped, <laughs> never stopped. Then the kids came back and, oh, this eyelash is like not rocking with me right now. After they came back, you can tell when somebody's been crying. So my kids, I know my kids were like, could tell that I've been crying and that like I look like I'm off. And I think my personality is very, you could tell, it's very easy to tell when I'm off or um, I'm not feeling a hundred because I'm so extroverted and my personality is so like hot and cold right there's no middle with me like I'm either really great or I'm like shitty and not feeling it and um I was just struggling and I felt like the let I was teaching shitty and 
the kids weren't getting it. And keep in mind, like, off, this was the one time I would, this is the first time in this classroom this year that these kids did not get a thing of what I was saying. And what I was teaching y'all was using a number line with fractions. And so obviously that is very complex. I don't even recall learning that in third grade, but whatever. It was just a hard lesson. And in that moment, I was just so full of like emotions and so sad and so (laughs) overworked. And like, I could laugh at it now because it's like, girl, that was a day. And I was so hard on myself. I was just like, damn, like, they're not getting it. What am I not doing? Like, I'm, I'm doing the things, right? I'm using the vocabulary partition. That means cut, right? I'm using the, oh, use the partition anchor. Like, I'm literally working like a dog. You hear me? Day and night. This is this is one of those moments that they not touching the fucking coffee pot that I, I okay? And I'm doing the things. I'm running through it. And I'm thinking, I'm keeping everything that they've told me in the past, all the feedback they've told me in the past and I'm like hey I'm, I'm running through it and doing it and I heard them like you know when you like already kind of self-conscious about yourself and like the shit you're doing so when motherfuckers laugh and they don't necessarily need to be laughing at you but it's like you're laughing in my vicinity I I was like oh no they're laughing at me because I'm doing such a fucking shitty job that's what I felt and I was just like, nope, correct. You got to get through it. You got to get through it. And I got through it. I was able to get them to an exit ticket. And I, um, when they were doing the exit ticket, I was like, please, y'all, I just need y'all. And my kids know, like, when I'm, like, joking, ha, 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 it's whatever. But when I'm dead serious, I was just like, hey, y'all, I need y'all to do your exit ticket at level zero for 10 minutes. Go. And they were like, yes, ma'am. And I just felt so freaking defeated, y'all. I was just like, yo, this day turned out to be trash. Um, It's not good. Throw the whole day away. Very emotional. Keep in mind, I'm going in and out. I'm not crying in front of my kids, but they can see my eyes. They see my eyes are, like, pink. <laughs> you know what I mean? My, like, shit is buffed up. Like, they see that it was a day. And so, finally, uh, I just, like, I'm like, hey, there's two other adults in here. I'm going to pop out and just kind of take care of myself. I was locked. I locked myself in the bathroom, and I just cried. Like, I just, like, could not stop. Finally, I was, and to the point where I was, like, in the mirror, like, you was smart. You was kind. You was beautiful. Like, I'm saying affirmations to kind of get myself together. Like, nothing was helping. You hear me? Like, nothing. So, finally, I was like, all right, cool. Let me take a breath. I go and I think I'm ready to go back in the classroom. And then one of the the one of my work colleagues or whatever was like, Hey, you want me to go in there for you? And I was like, Yeah, please. And started crying again. And I was like, You got to be shitting me. And and I I go, whatever, I do it. And I uh Eventually, I was just like, no, I need to talk to my supervisor because I wasn't feeling it. I just wasn't feeling the vibe. And I need a name for her like, hey, I'm having a moment, but I I'm, I just wasn't feeling that. And I don't know what that was, but let's not do that again. Right. It was like the snickering, the cackling. And it wasn't like when I say cackling, I'm not like, ah, ha, ha. like they weren't doing shit like that. But it was like little things like they would whisper to each other and walk away and then laugh. You know what I mean? It's like little shit that like that, that if you're already feeling self-conscious about like what you're doing, it makes it even, it makes you feel even shittier. And so I had a conversation with her and she was like, hey, I think she's like, I'm not, she was like, thank you for telling me one. But she was like, I think it's not that like you were actually doing everything right. Like we, you were fine. You're okay. And I think you were just in a space where you were very like at your peak, right? Where I was like very high as far as emotions. And so everything, I was looking at everything microscopic and really hard on myself and X, Y, and Z. And so I say all that to say like, woof, that was a day, right? Like this week was fine. That was just that one day that I was just like a hot mess. But I say that because we, we don't get, you know, I, all my stories got a lesson. You hear? Okay. I say all that to say is like I struggle with in the workplace personal I could I'm so good at naming like hey I need some time we'll do like I gotta take care of me but in the workspace I feel like I just gotta be 
a sister soldier all the time and like, oh no, I got to thug through it. And it's like, no, I needed a moment. And so it's okay for me to be like, hey, I need a second. Like I'm feeling very overwhelmed and I need to deescalate myself. I need to go get some air. I need to pop out. Like I'm not feeling like right. And I, I, and it's never gotten that bad. Like I've always, I've had moments, right? Like you're, you get frustrated, you get angry, or you get aggravated, and it could be with like staff, it could be with kids. You know what I mean? You always have those moments, but it's never something where it's like this big. And I think I'm a firm believer. Like things in our life, life, <laughs> things in our lives occur for a reason, right? There's a purpose behind it. And it is up to us to kind of like decipher and decode like what was the lesson in it. And for me, I what I took away from that situation was that I need to take care of myself, right? And in order to take care of myself, I need to step out of spaces that are not conducive to me at that moment. It was not helpful for me to teach my kids in that space and being so... Um, emotional and just filled with a lot of feelings right and like I even had moments where I had to catch myself because I was like I don't want to yell at the kids I don't want to you know what I mean like they weren't participating when I say it was the worst like my kids weren't participating it was like flat. it felt flat and it wasn't because of my teaching like I literally had two other people saying no you were doing the things right it was just it's hard they don't get it you gotta be gracious with yourself and so it was um it was so like it was a day so I need to learn how to like name like hey I'm not feeling I'm not in the space I'm not good I need to pop out I need to take a break and you know I I say this to everybody else like you don't get a award for you know <laughs> not you don't get an award for keep like pushing through shit you know like nobody's giving you a bonus for that You're not getting extra money for that and so really understanding like I need to take my time I need to take my breaks I need to do what is best for me and, and conducive for me because that is ultimately what is going to be helpful for my kiddos and the people that are um that I work alongside with. And so that was like eventful. Um something else that happened this week, because I'm telling you work was popping. You hear me? Um I feel like I said you hear me like 30 times. I'ma stop. <laughs> so that was Thursday. Friday, I came in. I was I, I had a good sleep because I spent half the goddamn day crying. So I had a good sleep. I exerted all the energy, and I got, you know. Next day, woke up, and Friday felt good. Like obviously, the kids are like, "Oh, is Miss Correct good?" Like, you know what I mean? What mood is she on? Like, is she better? Um, and I had tutorials that day too, like after school tutoring, and so I could tell like not all my kids, but. I could tell my kids were like tiptoeing around me. They were like, nah, I'm not even trying to talk to her because she kind of, you know what I mean? She got her own shit going on. And um, which also made me feel like, fuck, I didn't, like I should have just popped out. I should have took my time and popped out, which I did, but too late. But anyway, so Friday come or whatever, I'm in a better mood. I just feel like, all right, I have my refreshing cry. I'm good to go. I'm good to go for the rest of the year because I cry about like maybe once or twice a year. And, um... Friday happen, comes, I, I've said this <laughs> three times, but where I recess, I'm going to set the mood. Where I recess, my kids are playing, having the time of their life. They ball in, okay, you hear me? Having a ball. And two of my kids collide. And when I say collide, I mean like, boom. Like, it was like, watching it was like, oh, damn. Like, two rams kind of going into each other. And it was, our, you heard the thing, too. And I was just like, ooh, that can either go left or right. Now, I am somebody who has seen kids, I mean, hit their head on a pole and just bounce up like, do, 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 right? But I've also seen somebody like get their head tapped by, you know, somebody's hand and like, ah, like, you know what I mean? So I was like, I'm gonna wait this out. I don't know, you know, I'm gonna see what's going on. They then, so I'm watching them. They then come to me and, uh, and I see these, one kid had a big, when I tell you a big, bump like lump a size of a golf ball another kid had one under his eye and it was like the size of a dang on golf ball as well so I was like all right I sent a kid that was um not obviously in the collision and to take them to the nurse 
I, you know, can go ahead and take them. And when I tell you, there's nothing that irks me more than somebody playing with my kids. And I think for me, and this is why I feel like I have great rapport with my parents, my students' parents, because they know, like, I, I don't take this lightly, right? I understand that you are trusting me with your child, and so I know that that's major, that's big. You are trusting me with your child for, like, eight hours a day, for, you know, five days a week, sometimes six. And I just don't take that lightly. That's, like, a big deal to me. So, and I knew that these two kids were like off. They didn't seem, I was like, for you to hit each other that hard and instantly within minutes have big bumps like that, I kind of knew that they were going to have a concussion. But I was like, hey, I'm not a medical professional. I don't know. But I'm like, let me get to them to the nurse as soon as possible before, you know, they start vomiting, getting dizzy and things like that. Hence why I sent them with somebody, too, in case one of them fell or they were, there was somebody there that could, you know, get them help in the building. Fast forward, you know, my kids uh, were then transitioning to lunch from recess. And so I'm thinking the kids are in the nurse's office still and just kind of like getting taken care of. I see my kids down the hallway walking to, you know, walking. And I'm like, why the hell are they walking around? Like, didn't I send them to nurse? So it, I'm like in a I'm ready to fuss at them. And I'm like, but I was like, something told me like, hey, just ask. And I asked the student that I sent um, them with. And I was like, hey, what, you know, what are y'all doing? She said, and I, I, I really, I'm, I'm very good at, I don't want to misconstrue nobody's words. I want to make sure I'm saying the shit you said. The nurse said to come find you for a form. Huh? Come find me for a form. <laughs> I was pissed. So then I and, and the kids could see it too. I was like, come with me. I'm going to be the goddamn form. And I walked down. And at this point, I, I'm walking to the nurse. And at this point, I, I feel like a mama who, you know, they kid was, you know, some kid said, oh, some kid pushed me. And they going outside to see the kid that pushed them. So I'm walking down the hallway and I walked to the nurse. And I was like, hey, I sent these two where at recess. I don't have a paper. I don't have the form. But I'll get you that later. These two are not good. They need help. Like, you can see the lump and they just don't look good. She was like, oh, but what? She kept talking about the goddamn form. And I was just so angry because I'm like, okay. And I like, and it's a slow, my anger is slow. It's a slow creeper. <laughs> you feel me? Like, I, I give people a chance. All right. Okay. All right. She took it to the hoop and slam dunked it. And I was like, I don't give a fuck about a form. And I said this in front of my kids. <laughs> I instantly, like, I'm not even going to say instantly regret it. I felt good getting that off my chest because she fucking lazy. But one of the kids, the because both of the kids are on, by, uh, one is on each side. So one of the kids grabs my hand like a comfort in like, mm, my mama got me. And another kid looking at me like with stars in his eyes now. It could have been the concussion. But he looking at me smiling like, yeah, you you know, talk that. And I was like, I don't give a fuck about a form. Like these kids are clearly not okay. And so the paperwork shit can happen after. But God forbid these kids would have fell out because they're walking around the school building looking for me. Because you need a goddamn paper that can honestly wait until later is crazy to me. Later on, I found out, so whatever, the kid stayed there, I, you know, whatever, because I, I laid her out. I was just like, I don't have time. I don't play like that. So I later on, I go upstairs or whatever to fill out this form, and I walk past um, other teachers, and they were like, yo, I just saw such and such and such and such. They didn't look good, bro. And I was like, what do you mean? And they're describing, and they were like, they look kind of lost and not lost like, it was just lost, like, I don't know where I am a little bit. I'm kind of woozy and dizzy type stuff. And I was just like, bro, I already fe felt like they had concussions, and that just tipped me over because I was just like, okay. Keep in mind, I'm thinking the kids are in the nurse, so I'm thinking she's going to reach out to their families and stuff. Fast forward. It's dismissal time. The kids get the one kid is a pickup, gets in the car. Don't you know the mama called me, called the front office, let me rephrase, li livid as she should have been live it how her kid get in the car with a big lump on his face she nurse did not call the nurse did not call and I was just like in that instance I'm like oh you have every right to be peeved at huh 
That's like my kid coming home with uh, like a broken arm and nobody called me. Do you like, huh? So I told, I happened to be walking by the front office and I was like, tell the mama, give, my, give her my personal number. Parents don't get my personal number. So I was like, give her my personal number. And I uh, ended up having a conversation. She was livid. She wasn't mad at me. She's like, you did your job. You did your part. It's, you know, you passed the goddamn baton. She was supposed to keep running with it kind of a thing. And so I say all that to say, like, it bothers me when people, not just ed- educators, like, but anybody working in a school building and are, like, lazy and just, like, don't take kids, like, serious. Like, having a... a being a, a nurse in a school, not to say like it's over a nurse in a hospital, but it's just, it's equally as important, right? Because you are the medical, uh, what do you call it? The medical personnel on, on staff. Like you are supposed to take care of it. Later on, found out the day one of the boys was like uh, throwing up and one of the kids was like throwing up. And so had, has a concussion, right? Like went to the hospital for sure has a concussion. And, I just was in disbelief. And I say that like, huh? And I realize every day, like my mom loved to say, hey, you know, people are just so goddamn stupid. Like, I just don't understand how people could be so stupid. I didn't understand that until like now. Like I'm at an age where I'm just like, how how are you not taking that serious? How do you not understand like this is not a game and this is like for life, for real? It was weird. So my week, that's how my week went. And I was turned up, turned up towards the end of the week. The beginning of the week was great, but turned up towards the end. Um, Now let's get into the real Shazam because my week, dang, my week was crazy. And that was just two days, bro. Yeah, two days. That was just Thursday, Friday. Well, the life of a teacher, you know. Um, Let's get into rejection. I struggle with that. Do you hear me? I do not do well with being told no. Some people say that's because I'm the baby of the family and I'm used to people telling me yes all the time. That could be actually absolutely valid. I'm not going to take nothing away from that. But I struggle with, you know, asking somebody something. And this is not just, I think people think of this like, well, I'm going to ask this person out. And if they, you know, I think we think of rejection in that sense. And rejection is very much so not always that. It can very much so be like, I signed up for this thing. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know if that's rejection. If you signed up for something and then you're waiting for it or you're on the wait list for it or whatever, and then it ends up not happening for you. I don't know if that's rejection. I guess as being so no, I don't think that would be classified as rejection. But I am just struggling with not getting my way. I think that's the best, not rejection, but more so not getting my way and not things not falling into place how I want it to fall. So as y'all know, if you tuned into the No Clearance Podcast, I am getting a dog. Well, I was. And I was so excited. I went on um, Good Dog, which is this website that has all these breeders. And so you type in like the breed you would like. And so I typed in Cavaboo. They're so fucking cute and adorable. And we got the same like hair kind of like their hair is like red and curly. So I was like, oh, and I love that because, you know, how people say your dog is like a reflection of the owner. That Cavapoo definitely was, or Cavapoo definitely, Cavapoos definitely are. So I found this breeder and like really good, like hit it off. I'm very much so like relationship based. Like I need to have some type of rapport relationship with you to like, you know, purchase, work with you, you know, things of that nature. Found one. I applied to two different breeders and one breeder kind of responded right away. Well, not right away, but within like, I think the next day and was just so enthusiastic and they had like a quiz prior to like a, not a quiz, but an application process. So you answer a couple questions and then you, you answer a couple questions and then you, um, uh, get approved or not. And so I answered the questions and the questions are not crazy. Like, it's like, what do you do for work? What do you do when you're for hobbies? Um, how like active are you? Are you somebody that's like always in the house? Do you work from home? Do you mind going on walks multiple times a day? Like things like that, which would 
kind of reflect, you know, obviously how your dog would like, you know, the kind of environment your dog would be in and uh, why you want a dog and things like that. Right. And so I did that, got the application, got matched. We hit it off. Me and home girl were like, we're besties and was like, okay, cool. Like you're, um, they do it like drafts. <laughs> so I was the second pick for a boy. And so I was super excited and I'm going to do a vlog about this cause I have so many things. I'm, I probably could do a video about like what you should get a starter kit for, you know, bringing a dog home or a puppy home. But I bought all this stuff off Amazon. Like I bought a crate, I bought a bed, I bought a couple of toys, um, I got like leashes, I got shampoo, condi- like I got pads, like I got so many things for my dog. Cause I was so like, I'm getting a dog in March, right? Birthday gift to myself. Fun fucking fact. The dogs are not cavapoos. <laughs> I'm gonna say that again. The dogs <laughs> are not cavapoos. So cavapoos is a mixed breed. So it's a breed between a King Charles Spaniel, I think, and a poodle. And so, obviously, it's like, should be 50-50, you would think. So, the woman ended up giving getting the dog's DNA tested or whatever, and they're 100% King Charles. Now, when people ask me, oh, what's a King Charles dog? I tell them Lady in the Tramp. I think Lady was a King Charles dog. I, hopefully, I'm saying that right. King, I think it's King Charles. I forget. I think it's King Charles Spaniel, Spaniard, if I'm not mistaken. So apologized to me said the whole like oh my god I'm so sorry yada 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 whatever and I was just like oh. and crazy part is what the day before she sent me that message one of my students was like oh Miss Correct, like aren't you getting your dog next month and you know because I told my dogs I was like yeah I told my dogs <laughs> I told my kids I was like yeah I'm getting a dog mm-hmm. don't talk to me I'm getting a dog and they were excited like I showed them pictures of the dog um and like the dog breed and so you know showing them they helped me pick out the toys like my kids were like you know they were excited so she was like oh I should get your dog next month and I was like yeah I am she's like oh you should do a countdown on a whiteboard or whatever and I had all these plans I was like oh because I plan on getting a camera for the dog so I was like oh during independent work if they're rocking it out you know putting the camera so they could see the live stream of like what he was doing and things like that like I had this planned out so the, to hear the next day, like, actually, sis, like, they're not cavapoos. And so I don't know what you want to do. And I was just like, damn, like, so sad because I was, like, really excited about getting this dog in March and, like, making plans and things like that. And uh, things not going my way. <laughs> and so I was very upset. Not at her, obviously. I feel like. Yes, we can sit here and be like, how the hell did this happen? Like, you know, you're a breeder, figure that out. But a part of me was just like, I feel like it was meant to happen this way, right? I think I mentioned before in that, like I mentioned earlier, like I think things happen for a reason. Like things are not happening for the sake of like, you know, wow, the world's against you. No, things happen for a reason. I'm very adamant on that. Prime reason uh, I would be getting my dog in March. I would still be doing tutorials with my kiddos went Monday through Thursday. And that means like my dog would be home longer without, you know, going for a walk. He would have to wait a little longer and be like confined in the playpen longer. Like, you know what I mean? And so I was already kind of thinking about like, Oh, what am I going to do when I get him? Like, am I going to bring him to my friend's house? Am I going to bring him to a daycare? Like already trying to figure out like, what am I going to do? And so I feel like, yes, although I am sad, I'm not getting him in March and like very upset because, <laughs> well, not upset, but disappointed, I, I guess. Um, I feel like it happened for a reason. Like I'm not meant to have the dog yet and I need to kind of like gather my things. And when I say gather my things, like make sure that I have everything for him. I don't have like a carrier. What is that called? I think a crate. Like, you know, I don't have the cameras. Like there's things that are not necessity but it's nice to have, right? So, like, when he does, when I do get him, it won't feel like, damn, I don't have everything. Like, everything will be set in stone at that point. And so I did tell the lady I would, uh, she gave me a choice. She was like, hey, you can, I have some recommendations of people you can go to. 
or you can wait, you can go on the wait list and like wait out until, you know, they have their next batch. And I decided, I took a minute to think about it because y'all, I was just like, Hey, I built this rapport, this relationship with you. Like, you know, you follow me on Instagram. Okay. And she watches my stuff on Instagram too. Let me tell you. So it's not like she just follow, we follow each other and nothing like, nope, she watches my story. She like, you know, reacts to my stuff. Like she's very much involved and we talk like, I won't say every day, but we have conversation like, you know, it's just, it doesn't feel like it's a transactional thing. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, okay, I made the decision to stay and I was like, I'll be on the wait list. I think we've kind of come to a point where we build like this mutual business relationship where I trust you. I have like a great level of trust with you. And I think you could have been shysty and um, been like, yeah, this is a capital. Here you go. Right. And then I would have been like, mm, what's going on? You know? Um, so it's like, I have this level of trust with you. I don't want to have to rebuild that with somebody else, rush the process of getting a dog and then things go wrong. I feel like when you're rushing and you're like, my mom likes to call it fever. When you have fever for things, like things go wrong and it goes left. So I was like, no, I'm going to say, I'm going to remain patient and, uh, I'm going to pray on it and, um, I'll just go on the wait list. But I was just so freaking devastated y'all like devastated. I was just like, like, and when I tell you I, I bought, um, uh, <laughs> I bought like these little dog tags. Oh, and they're so freaking cute. But then this is another one. I bought these cute dog tags. I bought two because they said, um, you know, just in case he loses one or he gets damaged or whatever. Like I have another one with like the information or whatever. And don't you know, I was supposed to get it today. Fun fact. And did not come. It got returned to the, um, the people I bought it from because they wrote my, I think they wrote my address or something wrong. Like if God is not telling me, Hey baby, this is not time. <laughs> I don't, you know, I just don't know. I don't know. He's telling me it's not, it's not time sis. you, this is not really the time or place for you to kind of be dealing with this. So I, I say all that to say, like I'm struggling with things not going my way. I think I'm handling it well, though. I think I'm being very good about, you know, being firm in my things happen for a reason. I'm going to trust the process, right? And I think I'm being tested. I'm really good for saying, oh, no, trust the process. But now I'm being tested of it. And I think I'm doing a pretty damn good job because I, you know, I was like, okay, well, you know, cool. That gives me time to, like, you know, get my money up or save and, and think about, okay, realistically y'all I didn't want to get a dog while I was in this apartment not because it's not big enough like I feel like it's definitely big for a cavapoo like it's not a German Shepherd type but um I was just like no I want my dog to have a yard and like I want to be in a condo kind of a vibe with a, a decent sized yard where my dog can like I could just send him out he run and play kind of a thing and um I feel like maybe this is that happening and kind of like giving me time to arrange those things so yeah you know really recentering myself definitely still getting a goddamn dog I want my cavapoo I already got a name for him and everything and um so I'm definitely still getting a dog the timeline is just pushed back but we're being flexible we're being flexible and we're pushing we're rolling with it this week I've you know this month has been just like we're only 11 days in and it's just been like back to back to it's just been one thing after the other but we're rolling with it and we're staying positive so woo that was all of that to say it's about to be valentine's day by the time this comes out valentine's day will have passed so you're probably wondering <laughs> y'all probably are not wondering this but casey what, what are you doing for valentine's day i am not doing a goddamn thing i've never been somebody that was like really big on Valentine's day. So I, I just see it as, um, another day in my opinion. Um, would it be nice for if I had a significant other for them to, you know, give me flowers, chocolates and things like that? Like, of course, but I'm not, uh, I'm not counting down like Oop, four more days, five more days. Like I'm not counting down for Valentine's day. Like I was just never, <laughs> I don't know. I should ask the the my ex partners. I don't think I was ever big on 
Like, obviously, you should make me feel special every day. But, like, if you want to show me, a, a get me a token or something extra that day, that's cool. But I was never big on it. So your girl is currently single, not mingling at all. And so I am trying to really create a Galentine's. I want to do a Galentine kind of event. But I got to figure out what that's going to look like. My friends are very aggravating. And so they're shaky and flaky. Well, not flaky, but they just like, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. And in a day of crickets, nothing. They're aggravating, very much so. So I know that we mentioned going to the vineyard. I just want to do, I want to do something, but it, like with my girls, you know, like Valentine's doesn't, Valentine Day does not have to be this thing where, you are like, oh, if you don't got a man, like, oop, that's not for you. No, it's, you can have a Galentine. You can do something with your girls, your homeboys. You can, you know what I mean? Like, I think that's a day of, like, love. And it's not just, like, romantical love. Like, it could be platonic love. And just as long as you feel loved and you're giving love to somebody else, it shouldn't really matter. Um, So I really don't have no plans. I need to really figure that out. Like, I need to get my friends together. But I say that to say... I was talking to one of my friends about, like, relationship things. She had mentioned she knows this girl who she just finds to, like, be very, like, thirsty. And I think a lot of times when we think of thirsty, we think of men, right? Oh, he's so thirsty. But I think women, I'm all about equality, y'all. You hear me? And if I say you hear me, we should, I should probably do a count of how many times I say you hear me. Golly. Um, <laughs> we, you know, she has this friend and she's like, yo, she's just so pressed for love that she accepts love that is like shitty and not good for her. And I think I could, um, uh, what do you call that? I could empathize with that because I think. I am finally in a space where I'm, I can say and I feel like I just don't care about having a nigga right now. And, but I also think like I had to go through phases of dumb choices, dumb decisions, and not knowing my worth ish in order to get to this point where I'm like, yeah, I'm not phased by not having a Valentine or I'm not phased by not having a partner or people someone that I can like you know you know I'm 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 not like pressed that I don't I'm not dating someone at the moment um and she asked me she was like how did you get there like how did you get to that point sorry I'm like stuffed up out of nowhere and I think in my opinion and when I say these things I say it speaking for myself and I don't expect this to be anybody's like truth um but my own but I think you have to really figure out your worth. I think for me, there was a period in time last year, I will say like recently where I was like, oh, I'm okay with casual sex. Like, I'm cool with that. Like, you know, we can do cash. And in my mind, you know, saying that I was cool with it in that moment, I felt like, yeah, I was like, oh, I'm a dog. I, rough. I'm a big bad wolf kind of a thing. And like, Oh, I don't, you know, I don't need no relationship. I don't need nothing attached. Like, I could just, you know, casually date and mingle. <laughs> and I got to a point where I had to realize, like, the emptiness I felt from that. Of, like, being with someone physically but not being with them emotionally. And I, and what I mean by that is, like, I'm sharing uh, energy with you, like sexual, physical energy with you, but that's it. Like I, and after it's done, like, yeah, we chat and talk like, right. Pillow talk, but then you go about your business. I go about mine. Right. We're not texting all the time. We're not texting, you know what I mean? Throughout the day or whatever. It's not like that kind of a thing or it is, but it's not, you know? And being in situations that are toxic and tolerating people that are liars and not a quality of man that I know I deserve and, you know, to just tolerating a lot, right? And so I got to a point, and I, I could not, I cannot tell you. Well, I can. I can tell you exactly when it just, like, 
no, <laughs> no. I was dealing with this um, guy who's younger than me. And for me, I've never, oh my God, I've never dated anybody younger than me. For real, for real. Like I've, oh, I'm, uh, co- <laughs> I gotta say it again later when I'm like not laughing, but cause I had a, a thing in my head, but I've never dated no one younger than me. So I struggled with the age thing, right? Like this guy was younger than me. So maturity level, you know, they say guys don't mature till 25. He was under 25. And also same sign as me. Y'all know how I am about the Zodiac. Um, not that I'm like verbatim, like, oh, you, I can't date a whatever. Um, even though I feel that way about Virgos, cannot. Did it once. Mm-mm. Actually, I did it twice, but mm-mm, good. And this is the first time I'm dating somebody younger. Also the same sign as me. Literally, our birthdays are days apart and just very alike in a lot of ways. And it was like a mirror image. And funny that he would be the one to kind of like give me this lesson of like life and like love or whatever. But it was cool. It started out, you know, chatting, like getting to know each other, whatever. Obviously developed into being with one another in that way. And at first I was like, yeah, yeah, this is cool. This is great. Like, I love it. And then I developed like feelings, <laughs> you know, and it's like I need to and I, I, I now own it. Right. Like I am somebody like you look at me. Oh, I'm thinking of our wedding. Do you hear me? Like I'm thinking of our wedding, the song we're going to play on our dance. You know what? What our color scheme is like. I am that girl. And I've owned that. Like, I think I've fought it for so long that I'm to the point where I own it. Working on it, right? Not being so, like, eager to, like, essentially have your babies in my head. But thinking that through. And so realizing, like, oh, I'm, like, really feeling this guy. And I am now mixing what we do, the vibes we catch. (laughs) <laughs> with how we're like how we're feeling for one another right and so I think he was somebody who was just like yo I'm just trying to out I'm, I'm out here just trying to slang okay I'm out here just try, trying to catch vibes and live life and as he should like he is under 25 like I am over 25 and so the things we're looking for are very different and I think um that is like another added layer and I told myself, I was like, no, 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 I can handle it. I can do it or whatever. And one day, I was, one night, I had a couple things to drink. I wasn't messed up to the point where I was, like, twisted, but I was definitely, like, had no business, like, having the conversation I had with him. And I had a conversation, was talking or whatever, and just needed, and this is not the first time this occurred, he just needed a lot of affirming. Right. And I'm a big person on if you want me to fulfill your love language, pour into you, you need to be pouring into me as well. And so I always felt like he just wanted to be affirmed all the fucking time, just like wanted like wanted kudos all the time, like about whether it was his job or like, you know, personal, like just wanted kudos all the time. And wanted to be affirmed every time we had a conversation. It wanted to like, oh, look what I did. And it's like, oh, good job. I'm proud of you. Like, wanted that all the time. And yes, I'm not saying, I'm not complaining about doing it. But I am complaining that it wasn't equal, right? Like, I'm giving you a lot. I'm pumping out a lot of love, right? I'm like, heart, 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 love, love, love. And I'm not getting that same energy back. And so I felt like, well, damn, I'm giving you a fucking lot and I'm not getting anything. So that thing, that was something that bothered me and it did bother me for a while. And this particular night, it was the thing that kind of like, it was the last drop that kind of made the water overflow the cup. It was, what did he, what, what was the statement that was said? He was like, came to be, he was like, oh, am I just like pure convenience because I'm the only like guy involved or am I the best you've ever had? Something to that effect, right? I don't remember. I don't know. I also deleted the text messages so I can't even look it up to like, you know, check the receipts. And, and he's also blocked off everything. So that should just tell you something. And when I tell you that bothered me, I was just like, what? Keep in mind, like 
I'm very much so like men, I, I come into contact with men, I, I vet them out. Like, I'm not going to entertain you for the sake of saying, oh, I got five niggas on the roster. No, I'm not doing that. I've done that before. And it's just, it, it exerts a lot of energy and it just aggravates the hell out of me. Because it's like, ooh, you're not that special. It doesn't take a lot to peeve, piss me off. So I just, I don't, I'm not into that, whatever. And so it was in him saying that, that I was just like, huh? Like, that's absolutely not the case, like, with this situation. But if that's what you're feeling, you're absolutely, you're good. And I don't, I think I said something along the lines like, no, that's not the situation, whatever. So in his mind, he's thinking like, all right, bet, cool, we're good. And I was like, I took Drake's advice. And he was like, hey, sleep on it. If you wake up and you still kind of like, feeling some type of way about it then you kind of get into you know then you make moves so I slept on it also keep in mind I was you know taking it back a couple so I was just like let me chill whatever pass out and then I wake up and I'm still it's still like burned singed in my brain what he has said and I was just like you know what it's not even that deep it's not that deep I'm not gonna sit here and stroke somebody's ego for what do you know what I mean? You don't provide, you literally don't add nothing to my life. You have done the bare of the barest of the barest minimum. It doesn't make sense for me to continue to pour into you and give you my time and energy and make you feel good about yourself. Like, oh, I got this, you know, 20 something, you know, <laughs> fine 20 something girl, like on my, you know, back or kind of, you know, hyping me up, telling me, you know, that I'm doing a good job and yada. No, I'm good. I'm good. So in that moment, I just cut that off, blocked him off everything. Um, I, like, I mean, Twitter, t uh, t like, I don't even follow him on Twitter or TikTok, but I was like, just in case, I don't want to pop up on your shit. Blocked him off those things, blocked him off IG. Um, I, I didn't have him on Facebook, but I blocked him off everything. I was like, I don't want you to have access to me. Because I'm in this season as far as like love where I'm like, you will not, I repeat, you will not have access to me if you didn't know how to take care of me or how to treat me when you had me. You don't deserve to have access to me, you know. And I got into a conversation with, you know, people that was like, oh, I don't block people. I want them to see me flourish. You have every right to feel that way. I'm not that girl. I'm not that type of girl. I need you to block, be blocked off everything. I don't need, I need to be a hallucination. I need the only thing for you to know about me is the, the images you have in your head or the memories or whatever you got in your head. That's it. So after that situation, I kind of like felt like, okay, you know what? Maybe I'm not ready or maybe I can't do casual sex, right? I can't. And I think if you are also somebody who's like, mm, 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 find somebody else to do it, when it comes to casual sex, I think that's fine. I think there was a point in time in my life where I could, and I was just like out here living life. And not to say I was, you know, catching too many vibes, because, you know, we, we we safe around these parts. But I just felt like, no, I just don't want to do this. It's exhausting. I know my worth. And I also don't want to put too much mileage on the car, if you catch my drift. And... I also am a firm, very firm believer, and some people think, you know, agree with me, some people don't. I think that when you are intimate with somebody, you are allowing them into your spirit, into your soul, right? And so if you are just casually giving that away, giving that pieces of you, you know what I mean, to somebody who may give a fuck about you, may not, you're allowing their energy to come into you and manifest into you, and you don't need that. In my opinion. So after that, I, after I cut off that situation, I was like, I'm really cool on just <laughs> niggas. I am good. Men all together, I am okay. And it's the first time I could say, like, I firmly, I'm not. And I know I've said this in other seasons, but I've never felt this from the pits of my soul. I do not care about a man. And not to say, like, I don't wish to get married like I just don't give a fuck about that right now I don't I'm gonna look straight in the camera and say it again I do not give a fuck about a man like I'm not looking for that I'm not pressed for that and I think it's okay and I think you know as women we are kind of told like oh your biological clock or whatever that's fine 
what I'm not going to do is because my biological clock is ticking, right? Because I'm getting older, I'm going to settle for some foolishness and some disrespect and some belittlement. No. For what? It's for an illusion of like to say, oh, I got one. Look at me, y'all. I got one. Like, no. And I think as a, and I'm talking to my women when I say this, as a woman, you got to know what is worth more. The ability to say you got a man or your self-worth. And I say this to say, like, I was I was once on the side of, like, the ability to have a man is worth more than my self-worth and my self-love. And myself and the, the way I value myself. And I'm just, I'm no longer doing it, let me tell you. And I really don't, and, it, you know, it's crazy because I've dealt with, prior to him, I've dealt with dudes that were, um, that probably should have turned the switch on for me. But I think it was also my investment in this guy, right? And, like, feeling like there was hope there. There was potential. And so I think feeling that sense of rejection, I think, in a way, of, like, you're not giving me what I want. You're, you're, you, you're saying you know what I want almost, and you're not giving it to me, right? And I think that level of rejection is, it sucks. Like, I struggle with rejection. This is why I can't, you know, my friends are like, oh, go up to that dude. And, you know, nope, I do not do well with rejection. And it's something I'm working on. Like, real talk, y'all, I really am because I know rejection is normal. Like, all those no's are the, you know, all the no's you're getting is just a result of you getting closer to the yes, right? And I get that. I understand that. But, well, to a certain extent, but I think it's easier to say that than it is to, like, live that and do that. So, damn. I don't know. I just think it was just that final one. I was like, yep, I'm cool. I don't need to dating. And I've told y'all, dating is trash now. Like, you can't go on Hinge. You can't go on Black. You can't go on Tinder. Well, Tinder is like a sex playground. But I'm convinced that all the dating apps are really just playgrounds for people to, you know, fornicate and just find a fornicating uh, partner, a partner to fornicate with, whatever, you know. And I think at one period in time, like, could you find me on there on some foolishness? Absolutely, you could have. I'm not going to act like I'm above that. But I think in the space I am now, I just can't do it. I can't do it and I won't do it. And so... You know, I told my friend that I'm like, it really is something that your friend or you as, and this is not like a woman thing, but you as a person, you just have to know, like, I am worth so much more than just a body. I'm worth so much more than just pleasure. Right. And I think for me, I've learned that love is not just the pleasure, right? Love is pleasure, pain, um, some levels of like, you know, joy, some levels of sadness, like it's a mixture of all emotions. So if you're only getting one thing out of somebody or one uh, feel out of somebody, not to say it's not love. Well, I'm going to be honest, sometimes it's not love. If you're only getting pleasure from somebody, right, and you're only around them for the good, good times, that's not love, that's convenience. And for me, I refuse to be anybody's convenient partner or convenient person. Um and I think you ultimately have to have your own kind of like limit. You have to have your own point where you're like, hell fucking no, I'm not doing that no more. It's not working for me. I'm not, I'm good. And when you say that, and you're going to know it too. Like I could say I knew in that moment that was the, I'm good. You know what I mean? Because I knew instantly the feeling I felt. I felt like... It hit me like a rejection, like, oh, damn, you think so fucking little of me? Like, you think, like, I'm not out here popping shit? Like, you think I'm out here and I don't got the sauce? Like, you know what I mean? And then you think about all the thi- all the ways and feelings you're trying to provide this person, right? Like, I'm trying to make you feel joy. I'm trying to make you feel support. I'm trying to make you feel good about yourself, proud of yourself, and all these things, and you're only providing me that pleasure or that instant gratification of, like, that anxious kind of love or likingness, you know, where it's like, ooh, is he going to text me? Okay, it's been a day. Oh, damn, it's been two days. You know what I mean? Like, oh, he texted me back. I don't 
ever want to feel like I have to like question or wonder about love or a connection I potentially have with somebody. And I think ultimately, once you get to a space where that is no longer enough for you, that part time connection, that part time love, that part time um, commitment or not non commitment, you got to know to bow out. And I think we all have a threshold. And obviously, I'm not here to judge nobody in like, oh, girl, I'm still fucking with Leroy from around the way. And da-da. that's all that's your prerogative, bro. Like, that is your business, your prerogative. I just know for myself, like, I reached that point where I'm like, no, I really want to be, I know my partner is somebody who is kind, who is loving, who is passionate, somebody who is um, uh, empathetic, uh, person inside out somebody who is genuine somebody who speaks my language and understands me and doesn't want me to change like you know what I mean like I know my person's out there and I haven't met them yet and I don't want to also be in a toxic situation and be blinded by that toxic situation where I don't find or I pass my person you know what I mean so I, you know, if you are somebody who's kind of like in that limbo state of like, yo, this is not for me, but I like don't have nothing else. It, this too shall pass. I don't know what to tell you. Like, you just got to let that go. And I think like once I let that situation go, I realized like things were like life felt good. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think we think, like, oh, if I let this person go, life's going to be miserable. I'm going to be sad. I'm going to be lonely. No. Like, life felt good. I was like, yeah, I'm back on my shit. Like, I'm back focusing on work. I'm doing what I need to do for myself. I'm back on my podcast shit. I'm making sure I'm creating content. Like, my focus instantly changed and got to where back on track. And I think sometimes, and I think that's the other thing, too, is you know you're with your person when it doesn't feel like, Oh, I have to scrap everything I'm doing because I got to focus on him and and give this person, and it may not be him, but I got to focus on this person and give this person my energy and my time because if I don't, then they're going to fly away type stuff, you know? And it's like, no, you know what your person when you can do your podcast, do your YouTube channel, do your content creation, focus on your job, focus on your self-health and your mental health and things like that and still know that they're going to, they're going to be sitting right next to you still. You don't got to w- keep your eye on him. You know what I mean? Like that SpongeBob episode, he's like, I'm watching you. Like you don't have to do that with your person. Like they're not going to give up on you. And it's something that um, I remember my last uh, session with my therapist, we talked about abandonment, right? And I think that's the other thing I struggled with too. And I never could name it or I never let me rephrase I think I could have named it but I think I refused to address it right like I had abandonment issues I I had fear of you know being with somebody and I think it shows more so in my romantical relationships where I have this fear of somebody like you know if I'm not doing if I'm not pouring into that person 110 percent they're gonna up and leave because I'm not you know um, doing my part and I'm not making I'm not making sure they're happy and satisfied and like being such a people pleaser in that sense and um you know it was real I was like god damn this was a good episode I mean episode <laughs> this is a good session you know like really just getting that and naming that too and I think there's growth uh in na- knowing yourself enough do you know what I mean knowing that like hey my my self-esteem a little shitty it's a little shot and that's okay, but we're going we to get this thing together. And so I, I say that to anybody, if you are somebody that enjoys casual sex, this is not slander to that. I just think like you got to, if you are somebody who feels like that is not fulfilling you, if you are participating in that and it's like, you feel like this emptiness or like shit, something's off, leave that alone and take time to focus on yourself. Also, I think, like, when you have fever and when you're thirsty, you're so thirsty for something, that's when it slips out of your hand, right? It's like if you have a bug, you know, not a bug. Let's say you had something like a balloon in your hand, right? What happens when you add more and more pressure to it and suffocate it? It pop or it slips out your hand. And I think if you feel like you have to suffocate something or squeeze something tight and put so much pressure on it to, like, stay and be in your hand and whatever until, like, kind of morph and mold into the 
figure or shape you need it to be, baby, that's not meant for you. You know? Um, I'm more, yeah. Damn, that was reflective. That took a while. Let me tell you, that took me a minute because I think I was really on my city girl shit. Like, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm out here. And not to say that I was laying with everybody who had a pulse, right? Because your girl got decorum. <laughs> I'm a lady. But I think for me, I was just entertaining a lot of things that should have been not entertained at all. Like, we got to dead this. Like, you are actually not a good person for me. And just some of them were not good people in general. And, and not to say, like, they were, like, murderers or killers. But it was just like, you're not a good person. You're actually shitty. Um, and you got to work on that. And you got to kind of develop and grow, right? Like, you don't have a job. You don't think that's weird? You said you were going to move somewhere, then didn't say. It. It's just weird. You said you were going to do, you know, this thing. You're not. You said you were a lawyer, but you're not a lawyer. I looked you up. You didn't even do law. I think you maybe did law school, but that's not even a guarantee. That's not a promise. Um, And then, you know, it's just weird. It's like, what? Okay. Um, You said you're going to take me to brunch, and you don't do it. It's weird. That's awkward. You're not, you know, flaky. And you got to take those moments of like, I'm very big on like, hey, if I text somebody like, hey, uh, I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to take you to, we're going to go to the zoo, right? If that day come and I don't go to the zoo after I initiated that I was going to take you to the zoo, I think that's corny. It's corny and it's flaky. I did not hold the gun to your head to tell you to, you better take me to the zoo. You better take me to brunch. You better take me on a date. No, if I'm I'm not putting that pressure on you, but you name it, and then you flake or you, like, fall through, you don't mention it, you don't bring it up, and it doesn't happen, I'm looking at you crazy, and I'm I'll, I'm also, I can't trust you. I can't trust your word, and I can't trust your actions, right? And so I dealt with plenty of those, right? And I think truly just trying to, like, focus on me, y'all. I, you know, this is the first Valentine's where I'm, like, not... Like I said, I've never, I'm not a press person about the holiday, right? Like, I'm not like, oh, my God, I got four days to find somebody. But I'm just like, you know, first time I'm, I'm not like, I think, drilling it. Or I'm not placing emphasis on it. Like, damn, girl, you ain't got a, a balance eye. Like, you know, I even made a joke because I saw in my homegirl's classroom, she had like a, th- a, like a little sign. And it was like, oh, nine days until Valentine's Day. And I was just like, dang, I got nine days to find somebody or whatever, joking. And um, she was just like, girl, yeah. She was like, you know, and I was like, yeah, like, I just don't. I wouldn't even have known it was like nine days had she not wrote that on her whiteboard. Or, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just not aware of that. And I think it's okay, bro. Like, it's really okay. If you are single on Valentine's Day, if you don't got nobody to do nothing with as far as, like, romantically, And that's fine. I am waiting for the day where my man, because I'm manifesting this as well. One day, my man going to decorate a hotel room for me. Mm -hmm. Balloons, flowers, you know, the little pictures on it. Yeah, yeah, the whole nine. And I told my friend that. And she was like, you can do that for yourself. Girl, I can't. I get it. I can't do it for myself. But it would be nice to like, you know, oh, baby, I got us a hotel. Oh, okay. Not thinking of it. Walk into it. (gasps) You know? It would be nice. That's that's a, a goal of mine. One day, you know. Maybe for my birthday. It don't got to be Valentine's Day. You know what I mean? But, yeah. Your girl, mature. I mean, tw- I'm about to be 29. You hear me? I am grown. Grown as hell. Um, Yeah, so, you know, rejection, love. It's all great. We're maturing. We're moving with the time. We're getting older. We're getting wiser. We're moving smarter. Uh, what else? I think that was all my talking points. Turn up, turn up. Yeah, but thank y'all so much for vibing with me this session. Like, I really was just, you know, going into this, and I was just like, oh, I just want to chat. Um, if you haven't done so already, please tune in to the other three episodes. I have the Big Bad Beyonce, ta-da! I have the Leroy and Buki up. Um, I have the 
leave that there episode. So this week we are pumping out these sessions and episodes. So please make sure you are tuning in. If you have not done so already, please make sure you are subscribed subscribed (laughs) to Dareful KC. Yes, I am putting my podcast sessions on there, but I'm also doing a lot of vlogs. Um, I'm getting ready and mapping out a cooking with me. Uh, I want to do like a mixology thing, but I feel like I want to do that with one of my friends. I might do that for a Galentine um, episode or whatever. I feel like that'd be cute. But be on the lookout. Just know that on the YouTube channel, it's not just Dare to Talk. It's so much more. So make sure that you are subscribed, that you like things, you're reposting it, share it. Share it on your Instagram, share it on Twitter, share it on TikTok, wherever you can. Make sure that you are following me also on all of these. All of, make sure you are following me on all of these platforms as well. Your girl got an IG. I got a TikTok. I got a Twitter. Uh, I got, obviously, a YouTube Follow me on Twitter. The at is enjoy at enjoy the brunch, no capitals. And my TikTok and my IG is at KMC underscore 319, the big Pisces. And uh, the YouTube, hopefully you're watching me on it, is at Dareful KC. So make sure that you are subscribed. I am on the road to 100 subscribers. I'm trying to get 100 subscribers. So y'all got to help me out. If you are tuning in on a podcast, Spotify, or things like that, please make sure to drop five stars because I'm a five-star chick, not a five-star. Yeah, make sure you drop those five stars and a review. Let me know I'm doing good. Give me that affirmation. Affirm me, please, because your girl needs it. I need it in my life, Lord. So please make sure you are tuning in so you don't miss a beat because it's just the beginning. As always, peace, love. Oh, no, is that? No, that's not it. Look, stay blessed. Stay black. Hold on. What is the ending? Oh, okay. Stay blessed. (laughs) Stay black. Peace.